All right, in this lesson, we are gonna go through the allowance method for bad debt. We're actually gonna show you an example, and we're gonna walk you through all the steps associated to get to the allowance for bad debt number, and then from there, how do we calculate the bad debt expense? So let's review what we're gonna to need to be doing here in this example. So as a review, we're gonna have four steps. The first step is we're gonna need an AR aging listing. Um, sometimes it's given to you, other times we actually have to put it together we're gonna put it together because that's the worst case scenario is that we're gonna have to put one together. And so I'm gonna show you how we're gonna put that together. And typically we have these um, spaces of zero to 30, 31 to 60, 61 to 90, 90 plus, as far as how long that debt has been outstanding from our customers. Then step number two is we're gonna prepare a bad debt loss percentage for each of the categories that we've identified in step number one. That's going to be given to us. We may need to calculate each one, but for this case, we've actually have each one of them. And so we're going to apply that into the table that I'm going to show you how we're going to, that we're going to use. In step number three here, we're going to calculate the total expected allowance for bad debt using the information that we have in step one and step two. So we're going to calculate that out and that's going to give us our allowance for bad debt. Once we have the allowance for bad debt, we still have one more step to go through. That last step is we're actually going to calculate the bad debt expense. So what we calculate in step three is not the number that we use for bad debt expense. We actually need to do one more calculation by looking at what our allowance is right now. What should it be based on step number three, and then the difference being the bad debt expense, and then the journal entry that happens along with that. So let's take a look at our example prompt here. We've got a lot of information here, but I promise we'll walk through it very slowly. Company A uses the aging approach to estimate bad debt expense. The balance of each account's receivable is aged based on a three times three time periods as follows. So they use three time periods as far as uh, segregating or aging of their accounts receivable. So we have one through 30, 31 to 90, and 90 and above. And the amounts are there on your screen. For each aid group, the average loss rate on the amount of accounts receivable due to uncollectability is estimated to be 6%, 12%, and 20%. So our zero to thir or sorry, one through 30 days is gonna be at 6%, our 31 to 90 is 12%, and then our 90 and above is 20%. At December 31st, which is the end of the current year, the allowance for doubtful account balance was a $700 credit. We're gonna need that to calculate step number four, okay? Before the end of the end of the year adjusting entry is made. Prepare the schedule to estimate an appropriate year-end balance for the allowance for doubtful accounts. What amount of bad debt expense should be recorded on December 31st? So that is the prompt. Let's go ahead and look at each one of our steps. So our first step here is we're actually gonna prepare the AR aging listing. So I've got the prompt right in front of us or, or the portion that is important to us in this step. So notice that I've got a table here that I've created. So you may need to do this when you're calculating this on your own. So notice how I have on the left-hand side accounts receivable, then I have the estimated uncollectible rate, that's your bad debt loss rate, and then your estimated uncollectible amount. So we've got the rate and the amount. Then I have columns for each of the periods stated in the problem. So zero, uh, 1 to 30, 31 to 90, and 90 and over. And then I have a total column at the very end. So we know that company A uses the a, uh, aging approach to estimate bad debt. The balance of each A accounts receivable is aged based on three time periods. So we have 1 through 30, which is $11,000. So that's what I'm going to put in the box right underneath the one through 30 and across on the accounts receivable. So we're gonna put 11,000 here and our 31 to 90, we have 4,000 and then our 90 plus we have 2,000. Now if I total it all up, I get $17,000. So that's that first step in calculating bad debt expense. So we're gonna organize it as much as we can so that we can go on to the next step here, which is actually applying the percentages. So in step number two, we're gonna apply the percentage to the percentage row and to the aging uh, <coughs> uh, brackets here. So we know that um, on the one through 30, we're gonna be using 6%. So I'm gonna put in decimal form. 0.06. In the 31 to 90, we've got 12%, so 0.12. And then over 90, we have 20%, 0 0.21. 
Oh, nothing goes in this box because it doesn't actually matter. Um, we don't add a cross because then you would get 38%, which doesn't mean anything at all in this problem. So don't put anything in there. Don't confuse yourself, okay? So that's what step number two would look like. So moving on to step number three is we're gonna use step number one and two to calculate the allowance for doubtful accounts. So in step number three, we've got 11,000 times 6%. If we do that math, we get 660 bucks. If we do 4,000 times 12%, we get $480. And then 2,000 times 20% is $400. If we add all three numbers together, we expect that 1540 of the $17,000 will not be paid to us. We don't know what customers. All we know is Based on previous experiences, we don't think we're gonna collect $1,540 from our customers on the $17,000 of debt that is owed to us. Now, a couple of things before we go on to step number four here is notice that as the time period goes longer, the bad debt rate goes up, right? Because what's the chances that someone over 90 days is gonna pay us? Well, it's probably very small that they're gonna pay us versus someone who's just zero to a one through 30. Because one through 30 here is probably still current. What do I mean by current? It's not due yet because if we provided them a net 30, they have 30 days to pay us. Well, if that is one through 30, they're still not at their due date. So we would expect that most of these, if not all of them, would pay us. That's why we use 6% instead of 20%. So as we take the aging uh, further out, we would expect a higher percentage. So think about that when you're working through a problem like this. If your percentages are not like this, where it starts very low and goes high, then you need to question, did you put it in the right order? Or if that's truly what the percentages are gonna be, which they're usually not. They're usually smallest to largest. So again, understanding that, otherwise your calculation is going to be off. All right, step number four here is we're gonna compare this number to what was in our allowance for doubtful accounts. So we need to true up our allowance for doubtful accounts to 1540. So step number four, um, we know that at December 31st, which is the end of the current year, the allowance for doubtful account balance was $700 credit before the end of the period adjustment. So we know that we've got an estimated allowance of 1540, and we know that our allowance for doubtful doubtful accounts or allowance for bad debt was a credit of $700. So that's our ending balance of last year, which is our beginning balance this year. So that's what we have there. Now we know that this account needs to be at a 1540 credit. Why is it credit? Well, remember that the allowance for bad debt um, normal balance is a credit balance because it's a contra asset. So it works like an asset, but it's opposite. So an asset's normal balance is usually a debit. So if it's opposite from an asset, then the, the normal balance would be a credit. So the estimated allowance for allowance for bad debt would be a credit of 1540. The question is, is how do we get to 1540? Well, the only way to get to 1540 is to do what? is to add $840, right? So we're gonna add $840, and where are we gonna add it? We're gonna add it to the credit side. So we're gonna credit $840. So 700 plus 840 should give us 1540. So we already know that our bad debt expense is $840, and we know that we're gonna credit allowance for bad debt. So the question is, what are we missing in our journal entries? We're missing our debit. So what is our debit? Well, let's take a look at our journal entry here. So here, what is our journal entry? Well, our journal entry would be, we know that's gonna be credit allowance for bad debt. So allowance for bad debt of 840. And we know that we're gonna debit 840. The question is, what's the account? It's bad debt expense. So we're gonna debit bad debt expense. When we do this, now our allowance for bad debt, our cookie jar is at 1540. So we would expect that of the 17,000, 1540 is not gonna be paid to us. We don't know when, we don't know who, but we're gonna put that aside so that when it does happen, we can use that to extinguish the receivable. So that's what that looks like 
at the end of the day. Now, let me add one more twist. That way, if you get this twist, you know what to do with it. So here's the twist. Now, notice that we had a credit balance on the last example, but what about instead of credit, it was a debit. What do we do? Well, what we need to do from just a an understanding is we're now in the hole, looks like 700 bucks. So we need to climb out of that hole and then get to 1540. So again, if I kind of work this problem a little bit, you'll notice that we need to get to 1540 credit because nothing changes there. So 1540 credit, the only way to get to 1540 credit is that we have to get to zero. So we have to go 700, negative 700 to zero, and then we need to get to 1540. So if I add both of those numbers, the only way that this T account would work is if I credit uh, 2240, right? So if I do bigger minus smaller goes on the bigger side, I can take 2240 minus 700 would give you 1540, 1540 on the bigger side on the right side. So in this case, I'm going to have to do a bad debt expense for more than I calculated in step number three. So don't get too confused if it says debit. If it says debit, you need to do a T. I mean, I would do a T so that I can see it visually because it actually makes sense when you do a T. So if I visually put 700 on the left side, I know my balance needs to be 1540 on the right side. The only way to get to that is a credit of 2240 to the allowance for bad debt. So again, if you get this, what happens in a debit balance? We're just going to add on to our answer in three with the amount that is in our T account on the debit side. Is this a problem? Sure, it's a little bit of a problem, but hopefully this year we've changed the bad debt rate to make it even better so that we can pinpoint it. And sometimes things happen. This is an estimate and it's okay as long as it's not material to the entire financial statement, which is usually not. So that's what we do in a debit situation. So that is a look at the allowance for bad debt example. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope I was able to go through it um, slowly, but help you understand how to do it. I know there's a lot of steps, but once you get the framework together, it becomes just an easy calculation of different numbers and tables, and then you're done. So hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you press the like button below. And if you're looking for worksheets that go along with all of these lessons, head over to my website at patrickleemsa.com or click in the link in the far right. And I've got your next lesson right over here. So just click that link and it'll take you to that video. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson.